Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude. Today we are going to take a look at my CO2 rig thanks to a question I got on my YouTube channel. And we're going to talk about all of this right here. Okay, first off I just want to say thanks to Danton Barnes who asked this question um, on my YouTube channel on one of my other videos uh, concerning the CO2 rig that I use for... Um, airbrushing my models uh, in that first little segment there at the beginning of the video you saw the whole rig and what it looked like and uh, I'll put a link in the description below um, talking a little bit more about it in more of a general kind of way if you want to watch the earlier video so the way it works is the tank um, I actually got from a friend so I didn't have to purchase or rent that so in that way my my situation may be a little different than yours uh, if you decide to go this route but uh, i just went to a local gas supply and um, you know most towns have you know a few of them actually uh, where you get welding supplies and stuff like that and uh, the bottles come in various sizes there's uh, uh, five pound which is what i use um, which is fairly short it's probably no more than i don't know 24 28 inches overall length from the bottom of the bottle to the valve um, and there's also 10 pound there's bigger ones too I mean some I've heard of some people having the big giant canisters and you know that's cool you just have to take them in less to get them uh, exchanged now some places may refill them um, but some and I think most generally uh, do an exchange so you take the old bottle in and uh, they will give you another bottle and charge you a small fee whatever it might be I mean it might be as many much as 20 bucks uh, it just depends on the market at the time I found it could fluctuate <coughs> so um, once you have the bottle squared away uh, and they all come with a valve on top uh, as you saw in that first little clip then from there you need to um, have a regulator and that's where I'm gonna kind of take up with this uh, video uh, especially for you Danton to answer your questions um, as to what you need uh, specifically to make all this work so um, now you can get a lot of this stuff online but I prefer to go somewhere uh, where I can actually deal with people uh, for certain things especially stuff like this um, and it was a good thing I did because whenever I got my um, regulator with gauges um, it was defective and I ended up having to take it back and they exchanged it for me no problems <clears throat> it was about a month after I got it and uh, you know so that's why I kind of like doing it you know not online but like I said it can be done online you can get all this stuff uh, you just need to know what you're looking for so this here is the regulator and this is the connection point between the regulator and the valve on top of the tank um, it's a specific thread so you need to make sure you know that that's why it's good to get it all together if you can the first time um, another thing to make sure you get and I didn't have it in the package is this um, washer in here and the reason being is this washer is uh, made out of a hard nylon material and that forms the seal between um, this nut and the top of the tank so another thing to look out for is you want to make sure that you get a regulator that is designed for co2 as you can see right there in red it says co2 um, the reason being is uh, I think they're calibrated differently for different types of gases so you want to make sure you get one for co2 um, I don't remember the price of this one and again the prices can vary <coughs> um, so it seemed like it was around 60 or 70 dollars for this regulator so you know it's not exactly a cheap initial cost uh, but over time, uh, I guess it depends on what you're looking for. As I've mentioned in the video that I did before, one of the reasons I, I got 
I went with the CO2 setup is I got the tank for free, so that was nice. But also because it's perfectly silent. The only thing you hear is the hiss from the CO2 uh, from your spray, whatever, escaping from your airbrush. Um, there's no worrying about, you know, uh, compressor kicking on and off. It's nice from when I'm doing my videos, if I'm spraying, I don't have to worry about my compressor kicking off or kicking on. Um, it's quiet if there's people in the house doing quiet things. And especially, you know, if you've got babies hanging around like grandchildren, like I do, um, sometimes you don't want that thing just brrr, kicking on, making a bunch of racket. So I like the quietness of it. It doesn't disturb. If you're having a conversation. It doesn't disturb your conversation, whatever. So, you know, there's a weighing of if you want to spend the money to do it or just spend the money and get a compressor. Um, but, <clears throat> um, so after you have all of that, the next thing you need to get is an adapter to go from the regulator to uh, your hose. And I like using the quick release uh, air fittings um, because I can change out my, uh, brush really quickly. Uh, if I'm using say two different brushes, I can change it here. Um, if <clears throat> I have, if I'm using different brands of airbrushes and I'll get to that in a minute, but I like having this here cause I can have multiple hoses ready to go. Um, this can be bought at any hardware or do it yourself center type stores. Um, don't know what you guys call them over in Europe, but anywhere where you can buy like, you know, plumbing or, you know, gas air fitting, stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, since you're getting this all, you know, in theory in one place, you might as well get this as well. Uh, so that takes care of all that. Uh, this part here is the, um, controls the amount of PSI you have going on in your output. Uh, this one here is your input. Uh, on my five pound tanks, um, whenever I get them new, they're generally around 1000 PSI. Um, and this one, I, whenever I unplugged it, it was one notch below. So, and I've had it since July 27th. So, uh, the last tank that I used, I got on 12, three, uh, December 3rd or three December. Uh, 2018 and I didn't have to replace it until July 27 2019 so I'm getting quite a bit of use out of a tank and to me it's worth the money um, there's nothing mechanical to go wrong like on a uh, compressor um, but that's the uh, inbound pre or the pressure coming from the tank into the regulator uh, this here, you know, you, you'll watch it start dropping. And once it gets down, you know, into this area here, that's when you'll want to think about, you know, changing up your tank. There may be a little bit left in it, but you don't want to run out partway through a job. Um, it hasn't happened yet. But uh, right down in there is when you want to start thinking about replacing it. Uh, this here, you know, you've got this range of uh, PSI to work with. Um, and it's just simple twist turn type deal. So on the end of my hose, I have now there's quick releases available for your airbrushes. Okay, this is an Iwata. This is an Iwata. So that handles that end. But what if you have a pache it's different it's got a different thread it's smaller than the iwata it's not going to fit so my solution and i guess there are you know like more universal type deals but it was easier for me just to get two of these one for my iwata hose one for my pache hose a lot of you may be thinking pache why in the world would you be using a pache well because i like it for spraying big stuff so anyway they fit right on there like that so you're good and that's my wife singing um, so that's free fits on there just like that so you're good to go you can change quickly between airbrushes so like if you're changing uh, if you're you know spraying something big and then you're ready to spray some 
for more detailed stuff, you can without having to use wrenches or anything weird like that. So basically, that is it. That is all the parts you need to hook up a CO2 tank. Now, you may notice that I nowhere have I mentioned or shown where you hook up a moisture trap. Well, that's another one of the lovely things. You don't have to have a moisture trap with one of these setups because the tank is filled in such a way that no moisture gets inside and it's CO2, so there's no moisture present. So, don't need one. Um, I've had a moisture trap on for a previous uh, compressor setups and had problems with um, um, moisture getting by the uh, by the moisture trap. So anyway, that is basically it. I hope that answers any questions, especially for you, um, Danton, uh, and is helpful in deciding if you want to go with one of these rigs or not. Uh, so. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, just put them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can and hopefully clarify anything that you might uh, need to know. So thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and I will see you all later.